Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for the opportunity to speak before the full committee today about my amendment and the nature of a substitute to H.R. 3224, which will be referred to as the Deborah Sampson Act. Women have served on land, air, and sea in every conflict since the Revolutionary War, and every single one has been a volunteer. This bill is named after Deborah Sampson, who served in the Continental Army for 17 months and was wounded in action in July of 1782. In 1805, Congress granted her a pension for her service. Currently, women veterans comprise the fastest growing demographic within the veteran community, yet their invaluable service is often overlooked and forgotten, leading this, these women to feel invisible. Like Congress recognized Deborah Sampson in 1805, the task force recognizes and honors women veterans by ensuring inclusivity and equitable access to resources, benefits, and services. This year, the task force has held roundtables, conducted site visits, met with women veterans to identify inequities faced by women veterans, and developed legislative solutions. These veterans have consistently communicated the barriers and challenges they face in obtaining critical benefits and services. Unfortunately, these barriers include the lack of appropriate gender-specific services and equipment like mammography, the lack of recognition for their service for compensation and benefits, and harassment and sexual assault at VA medical facilities. The Deborah Sampson Act will address many of the inequities and barriers that the task force has identified. The Deborah Sampson Act combines my bill, the Women Veterans Equal Access to Quality Care Act, which will ensure that women's primary health care is available during regular business hours at VA facilities. With 15 women veteran-focused bills uh, that were introduced by me, HVAC members, and our colleagues in the House. In addition to providing women veterans with equity in health care, the Deborah Sampson Act will establish within VA the Office of Women's Health that will report directly to the Undersecretary for Health. It will also improve communications regarding women veterans' services, establish and improve environment of care standards at VA medical facilities, provide additional funding and authorities for women veteran programs, permanently authorize post-traumatic stress counseling and retreat settings, expand eligibility, eligibility for MST counseling, provide extended care for newborns, ensure mechanisms and policies are in place to end harassment and sexual assault at all VA facilities, and require reporting on women veteran services and benefits. I look forward to continuing to work with all of you to ensure we are supporting and honoring women veterans and transforming VA so that all veterans <coughs> receive the benefits and services they have earned and deserved. My bill would build on the work that Congress has done since our nation's founding to recognize women who have served in the military. By moving this bill forward, we can send the message to America's women veterans that we see you and we thank you for your selfless service. Thank you to every member, including Representatives Allred, Brindisi, Cunningham, Levin, Lee, Pappas, Rose, and Underwood, who contributed their ideas and input on this legislation. At this time, I yield to the chairman for a motion.